Stand by for action. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well. A few weeks ago I flew my Arrows Hawk, the 50mm one, on a 4S. Completely changes it. It hand launched really well. It flew well. Excellent. And on the 4S it turned out that there's 38, 39 amps. Now it's only got a 30 amp speed controller in it. I wasn't happy with that. I know a lot of you do fly them or a lot of people fly them on 4S and they're standard as they come out of the factory. What the heck. I've got a 40 amp speed controller here. Got it from my local model shop. Don't know the make. What's the make? Beatles. ZTW. I think make it. Uh, from what I've seen they look pretty smart. They're not too chunky and big and this is a 40 amp as I said. I'm going to put this in place of the 30 amp on both the Hawk and the T33. I've got two of these of course. Let's get on and do it. What I've done on this, I took the wings off to see where the speed controller is. Now the speed controller is housed between the upper foam here and a foam shelf with some cooling slits in it. So you've got two options here. You either go underneath, you take the wings off, you then have to start cutting foam out to extract the 30 amp ESC. You then have to put the 40 amp in and tape it in place or somehow secure it in place so it doesn't drop down into the airflow. Well, I looked at it and I thought, I'm not messing around with that. So I whacked the wings back on. And what I have done is this. What have I done? Well, that's the hatch. I've then cut a long and using a panel line so this whole piece here comes off. Exposing my speed controller. You can see the holes here on this piece and the push rods go underneath it. So if you're coming from the other side, you have to cut all this away. I'm not messing around with that. So there's the 30 amp speed controller. And then I realized that the motor connectors are just up here as well. They're just up here. And in order to get at those, I've cut another piece of foam away, which is this piece. What I can now do is turn these out this way and I've got access to my motor connectors. It looks pretty drastic but they're nice clean cuts, smooth cuts and what I will do afterwards is when I've replaced this tiny little thing with this <laughs> but it does fit in actually very nicely. Let me show you that. It actually sits in there perfectly and then I can put the top on. But when I've done that, this of course will come back this way, like that. This will get foam tack on it and it will go in place and you will not even know I've cut it. And the same goes for this top part. The speed controller will lay flat like that. And then this piece will be foam tacked into place. And you will not know that I've done anything. I was going to do this job without showing you. And then I thought, well, actually, it's quite a significant piece of work. I'll be absolutely honest here, I'm pretty impressed, you know. These are not just bullet connectors. They're actually taped. They've actually got tape holding them together. Yeah, so all I have to do is disconnect these. That might be 
yeah, it's absolutely harder done than said. It's very good what they've done though. Goodness me. There you go. It's one. Two. And that's what was in here. It was a little Arrows 30 amp ESC. It does say two to four lipos. The concern I've got is when I did my amp test on it, it was drawing 39 amps with a 4S on it, and I don't want to risk it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this away, the old 30 amp. I'm going to do a bit of switching around. I'm going to take this. XT60 and connect it onto there, put them on there, and I also cut it down so they're the same size so they fit perfectly in there. I'll go and do that, then we'll come back and we'll fit this. That took a little longer than I thought, but here it is. This is the new speed controller. I've used the XT60 and wire from the old one, I've soldered it here. Um, and then I've used the small connectors, the three millimeter connectors from the old speed controller, attached them onto the end of this one, so they'll just plug straight back in there. I'm not sure if I've got the length right, but we'll give it a go. See what happens. I've got the color coding mixed up as well. I don't know if this will be correct. Actually, normally you have to twist them around, don't you? It might run the incorrect way to start with, but we'll turn them around again if it does. So they do that. They then go in there. That goes in there, like that. And then this lot comes over here. Let's try it. No, it's fine. Controller's in there, they're in, they're in, that gets glued into there. And that's the job. But of course I'm not going to glue anything in until I know the fan's spinning in the right direction. So that's our next test. Okay, so I've got it all collected up. I'm not worried about movements, I just want to test the fan unit. Blowing that way for sure. Yep. So we've got a 40 amp speed controller now in line, all wired up. I'm going to put my watt meter in there and we're going to get a reading. So I've got a 4S, 2200, that's irrelevant, but it's a 4S. Going into my amp meter. This does other things as well, but it's basically measuring amps at the moment. That goes out into the 40 amp speed controller which goes into the motor. Now currently it's at 0.2 amps. Now that's going to be because I'm powering the AS410 through it and I'm also powering the vector system through it. So what I'm going to do now is hold it in place and see how the amps go. Okay, now luckily for me, this new meter I have actually has a maximum. It's actually 528 watts. So I've got a 40 amp speed controller, way within the safety margin. I can now put everything back together. So before I start gluing on this, I just want to make sure that the speed controller is not going to move around. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of double-sided with foam, and put that in there, peel it off, and then I'm going to stick 
those on there like that. That just helps hold that in place. This is coming back here into there. I don't have a problem with that either. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same. Pull that back. And then this and this. That's going there. That's going there. Might be a bit tight, so let's do that like that. Okay. That's going through the middle there. Let's stay in there. Right, I'm now good to start gluing. So the first piece is going to be this, which is covering up those connectors. And for this job, I'm going to go to foam tack. Put a bit on this side. Sorry about the noise of the door. I'm trying to do this without getting glue all over the red phone. So I'm pretty good at doing that. Let's pull it out, push it in, pull it out, that's better. There we go. That's it. Of course that was following panel lines, not quite here, but here it certainly was. So you'll have to look pretty close to see that I've actually done anything there. It's great, it's not going anywhere. Okay, this is getting glue. Along there. sure you could come in from the other way but I think you'd have to do a lot of fiddling around but this way you just expose the speed controller and whack it in there I've got to do the same for the T33. I just hope it's as easy as this one's been. Right, so that's going over there. Take it off. Yeah, it's string all ready. That's excellent. Put it back on. Make sure it's lined up so you don't see any of the white. Job done! Let that dry. Just let those dry in place. That goes under there. Down like that. There we go. And then of course this just snaps into place like that. Right, well that's it. Arrows Hawk 50mm EDF with a 40 amp electronic speed controller. Now I'm going to get on and do the T33. I've cut along as you can see here and I've also cut along the other side and taken that section out. You can see I've used the red line to mark as a panel line. I was a bit surprised here. I've taken out the speed controller, put it to one side, and you can see the elevator push rods. And the speed controller was basically just lying on top of them. If you look to the left of the red panel line where I made the cut, you can see a plastic perspex little piece that stuck to the top, underside of the top of the air tube. The push rods go under that. This is just another view of how the speed controller was located. That's how I found it, just sitting on top of those push rods. And you can see clearly the little square of perspex. It's a little thin plastic sheet where the black, yellow and red connectors to the motors. They were just resting on that. Exactly the same speed controller that was in the Hawk. It's in, uh, I see it's an Arrows branded 
30 amp 224 lipos but again it's only rated at 30 amp so here i've removed the speed controller and i wasn't happy with putting the speed controller back that was leaning on those elevator rods so what i've done here is i've used magnum ice lolly stick cut it down to size glued it in above the push rods means i can lay the speed controller on top of that or lie is it lay or lie the speed controller on top of that because it also touches that perspex piece you can see there and it will be above those push rods and not leaning on them here's a test fit the speed controller hasn't got all the connectors on yet this is after i've done all my soldering so you can see this part where the xt60 is was taken from the old speed controller i've run out of three millimeter connectors believe it or not so here i've just spliced in the ones from the old speed controller the red yellow and black you get a better view here of the magnum ice lolly stick i've put a little bit of double-sided sticky foam there i can just stick the speed controller down here's everything connected up again and they are connected the right way because i did a motor test and it's definitely pushing out air the way it should do so i did an amp test and different results yeah this one's only drawing 36.6 maximum amps at full throttle where the Hawk definitely was drawing in 38, 39 amps. Having said that, it running amperage was still at 32, 33. So I'm quite happy that I've now got a 40 amp speed controller in it. And here's the surgery, if you like, all patched up. You can see the lines a little bit on this one, but I have bound them down a bit tighter and pushed them flat. So I'm happy. Well, there you are. That was quite interesting, I think. It's just the way I do things. I slice foam and I glue foam back together. <laughs> but, you know, it worked for me. I didn't have to fiddle around with the wings off and try and get under the wires. And uh, I can't, I'm, not, I'm not made for that sort of thing. It worked well. It's all done. It's all back together, ready to go fly. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay well. I look forward to you joining me in another video soon. Cheers.